Welcome to EC Limu Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the introductory part of this topic, we said the key statement which will guide the beginning and the end of this topic is that for every conductor carrying current, there is a magnetic field around it. Now we are in the process of determining the direction of that magnetic field. And in the first or in the previous lesson, we discussed one of the ways in which we can use to determine the direction of the magnetic field around a conductor carrying current, and that was Hans and Ampere swimming rule, which states that if one imagines to be swimming along a wire in the direction of current and facing in the compass needle, then the north pole of the needle will be deflected towards the swimmer's left hand. Now, in this lesson, we are going to discuss another rule which we can use to determine the same same direction of the magnetic field along or around a conductor carrying current and that is Fleming's right hand grip rule for a conductor or for a straight conductor carrying current. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to define Fleming's right hand grip rule for a current carrying straight conductor and then later use the same rule to determine the magnetic field pattern on a straight carrying current conductor. So practically, if you take a straight wire, this is a straight wire with current flowing through it, this is the flow of current in that direction. So in this case, current is flowing upwards and then this current is very large and you penetrate this wire through a cardboard. This is a cardboard. So if you penetrate it through a cardboard and then on top of that cardboard where the wire which is carrying a large amount of current is flowing, you sprinkle some iron filings. When you sprinkle some iron filings, what you are going to realize is that the filings will form a pattern of concentric circles around the wire, just like when you sprinkle iron filings close to a magnet. So therefore this means there is a magnetic influence or there's a magnetic field around this wire. Now the behavior of ion filings in this case shows that the magnetic field around a straight conductor carrying current forms a concentric pattern. Even if you remove these ion filings, there will be patterns which we can't see, which are concentric and they are perpendicular to the conductor. So in this case, the behavior of these ion filings communicates to us that around this wire, there are magnetic field lines, which we can't see, of course, and they are forming concentric circles, which we call the magnetic field lines. Remember, we discussed magnetic field lines in magnetism, where we also discussed some of the characteristics of the magnetic field lines, is that they originate from North Pole to South Pole. They form a complete loop, which does not have any deviation, and then they don't intersect with each other. So what you will realize on this iron filing, these iron filings are not intersecting with each other. They are forming complete loops along this wire. So therefore it means along this wire which is carrying current, there is a magnetic influence around it. And that's what we call a magnetic, magnetic field. So this magnetic field now is the one which is formed along the wire. And that's what we are going to discuss in this case our aim will be determining the direction of that magnetic field. Like in this case, you can even predict from the knowledge that you have from Ampere swimming rule. Assume you are swimming along this wire up and then your left hand automatically will point in this direction. Your left hand will point in this direction. Then behind the wire, this way we have behind the wire. In this case, uh, the field lines will be moving in this direction behind the wire. Then now when you join them in front of the wire, it will be moving like that. So the overall direction of these magnetic field lines will be in anticlockwise direction along this conductor carrying current. So in this case, we are not going to use ampere swimming rule to determine the direction of the magnetic field around a conductor carrying current. We're going to use another rule which will give us the same same result like the one that we got using Ampere swimming rule. Here, we are going to use a rule which we call Fleming's right hand grip rule for a current carrying straight conductor. Remember, here we are using for a current carrying straight conductor. We also have another 
framing his right hand grip rule for a solenoid carrying current. So here we are we were specific to a carrying straight conductor. So in this case, this rule states that if a current carrying conductor is gripped in the right hand with the thumb pointing along the wire in the direction of current, then the other fingers will point in the direction of the magnetic field. So if you we consider the first diagram here, if you grab or you grip or grasp this conductor, this is the wire here, current is moving up, then you, gra you grip it in such a way that your thumb is pointing in the direction of current. Current is moving up, the thumb is moving up. Then when you grab this uh, conductor, these fingers will point in the direction where the magnetic field will be moving. Therefore, it means in front of this wire, the magnetic field is moving to the right, like that. Then behind the wire, current is moving to the left, like that. Now, we can compare this with what we discussed in Ampere Swimming Rule. Assume you are swimming along this wire. You are swimming up. Then in this case, if you are swimming up, your left hand will point in this direction. Left hand will point in that direction. Therefore, if you have a compass needle behind below this wire, the magnetic field will be moving in this direction where we have the left hand. This is the same as what we have determined here. Look at this. Behind the wire, the current or the, the magnetic field is moving in this direction. Here, like that. Then in front is moving the way the fingers are moving. Like that. So this one gives us the same result like what we discussed in Ampere Swimming Rule. Like in this case, we have an elaborate diagram here where we have a cardboard. It's a card board. Then now in this case, if you grasp this conductor in such a way that your thumb, this is the thumb here, pointing along the direction of current, then now the fingers will point in the direction of magnetic field. Therefore, it means in front here, the fingers are pointing in this direction like that. Then now if they move, if they move and form a complete loop, then behind this wire, this current is going to flow in that direction like that. So in front, it's moving in the right hand side. Behind, it's moving in the left hand side. And you can compare this with the ampere swimming rule. If you swim up like that, then the left hand will point in this direction. This is the left hand. Then this cardboard, we have the front part and the back part. Here, we have the back part. Then here, we have the front part. Now, the front, the, the back part is where we place the compass needle and it will deflect to the direction of the left hand. Therefore, it, it is telling with what we get in this case. In Behind this wire, current is moving in that direction to the left. And then in front, current is moving to the right. We are going to handle several examples, but before we move to those several examples, I want you to note that we have several symbols that we use in this topic to represent different movement of current along different services. Like in this case, the first diagram we have here, we have a diagram of current moving in. In this case, current is moving into the service and we draw a circle with uh, an X on, on top of that circle. In this case, if you are facing this screen, it means current is moving from your eyes into the screen. And in this case, the second diagram here, we have a, a, a circle with a dot. This means current is moving out. Current is moving from the screen into your eye. So in this case, if you want to determine the magnetic field around this uh, two wires, then what you do, I will encourage you, you use a pen or a pencil. If you have a pen and a pencil, it has two sides. There is a side which you use to write, which is very sharp, and then there's a side which uh, is blunt. So the side which is sharp, I want you to use it so that you place it in the direction in which the current is moving. So if you have a pen like this, let me draw here for better. If you have a pen like this one here, you have a sharp point, this is a sharp, then this one is blunt side of this pen. Now, when we want to use it to determine, it will be very easy for you to use it to determine the direction of my magnetic field around this. You will bring this sharp point 
like in this case current is moving in you place it at this point here where current is moving in so this sharp point will face the direction of current then now you will grasp this pen say that your thumb points where the sharp point is like in this case now can you grasp your pen so that the sharp point is pointing into this or into this arrow not, not even arrow this uh, cross then in this case if you do that you are going to realize that above this a wire above this wire the fingers are moving in this direction and below this wire all here the fingers are pointing down like that so if we draw field lines which are complete and not intersecting like that then it means here a current will be moving in that direction then down here it will be moving like that here it will be moving like that in a complete loop so this current is going to move in a clockwise direction and now on the other side that is number two here in this case where current is moving out of the surface i want you now to place your pen side so that this part which is blunt is in contact with this dot side so that now the sharp points points out of the surface side so that current is now moving into your eye so this sharp point will move out of that surface in this case if you grasp that pen side so that your thumb is pointing in the direction of that sharp pen then what you will realize in at the top of this uh at the top of this wire current or the, the fingers will be moving in this direction and then uh, here the fingers will be moving down then here the fingers will be moving like that so if we draw concentric circles around this uh conductor like that then here we are going to indicate the direction of magnetic field in that direction here it will be moving down like that then here it will be moving like that and here up like that in this case the current is moving in anticlockwise direction so i want us to use the idea of ampere swimming rule to determine if we will get the same same direction so here in the first case we have a current which is moving into the screen now can you assume you are moving or you are swimming inside the screen your left hand will be pointing in this direction like that so if you have a compass needle below this wire or below you and you are swimming into the screen with the left hand assume you have a compass needle below here where will it move to it will move in the direction of the uh, left hand then automatically on top it will move in the right hand side of the swimmer and we go to the second diagram assume you are swimming from the screen out when you swim from the screen out then your left hand will be here this is the left hand and therefore in this case if you are swimming like if you have a compass needle below here then the compass needle the north pole will point to where the left hand is pointing it will point like this so that's why we have this field here pointing to the side where the left hand will be, will be moving or will be deflecting so as you can see the two rules will give us the same same results and that is very important to note that will mark the end of our lesson today in the next lesson we will discuss more examples on fleming's right hand grip rule for a conductor or for a straight conductor carrying current